When last we were together, we were looking at what a costume designer does, the application. And we have the rendering that's presented to the director. And then that rendering is used to create the costumes. Now there's a step missing in here. And I think I talked a little bit about this. After they, the designer, the costume designer does the renderings, they have meetings with the actors. And those meetings are usually called fittings, where they'll make something, they bring the actor in, the actor tries it on, and there'll be two or three of those, of those fittings. Um, and then eventually they'll get the costume the way they want it. Then there's a special rehearsal just for the costumes. Well, not just for the costumes, but featuring the costumes. And we call that what? Dress, dress rehearsal. At the dress rehearsal, the actors get their costumes for the first time and get to perform in them. Um, it's an important rehearsal uh, because a lot of times this is the first time under the lights we're getting a chance to see what the costumes look like, to see how they move, to see if they're going to work. And um, the director and the costume designer will meet following that rehearsal, immediately following that rehearsal, and go over any changes that might need to be made um, in the costume. Then their final, they fix up everything and then the costumes, there'll be usually one if not, here at the university, one to three costume uh, dress rehearsals with the costumes and then the show opens. Of course on Broadway they have a little better with that because they, they do dress rehearsals and then they do previews where they'll show the, the play to an audience but it's still a rehearsal and they'll charge cheaper tickets to come in and see it uh, and then they get the, a chance to work on the costumes. I understand they had to work quite a bit on Spider-Man's costumes uh, during the previews of Spider-Man the musical which is pretty horrible. Any questions about the costume designer? All right, let's go to the next slide. I forgot what it was. Yeah, we're talking about the, that's what I've been talking about, the process. Let's go to the next one. Lighting design. Lighting design, this sounds like a test question. The most powerful tool we have in theater design lighting design, the most powerful tool we have in theater design. Why would we, why would we make that statement, do you think? Why is it the most powerful tool? Lighting can set the mood a whole lot better than some set. Okay, can set mood. What else? There's other reasons too. There's a basic reason. You have to be able to see. I mean, I can build a beautiful set if there's no light on it. I can have beautiful costumes if there's no light on it. And we can't see it. We don't have a play. So, without lights, there, there is no show. Now, we've not always had lighting designers. In fact, that's really new in terms of, of the types of designers we've had. Because we've not always had lighting. In Greek plays, where did they perform? What was their lighting? The sun. the sun. They were done outdoors during the day. Shakespeare, what was the lighting? Huh? What? Not candles. Huh? Not stars. They didn't do it during the day, at night. I heard it back here. The sun. 
They performed during the day. They had a big open theater, had a big open roof. And they could only perform when the weather was nice because the light would come down and shine on the actors. Eventually, uh, by the restoration period, can we shut that door? By the restoration period, we got, um, they started to use candles. But all it was was a chandelier hanging over the stage. And they, that was it. They would, you know, they would have chandeliers over the, th and they didn't take the house lights out. So the audience was sitting under chandelier light with candles, and the cast was lit by chandelier light with candles. Eventually, in the 1800s, they had this whole new thing, which was kind of like really cool, and, they, and the people started freaking out because they were able to do something a little more with light. What changed? What did they start using for light? Not electric light, before electric light. Gasoline. Gasoline. They had gas lamps. And so they would, they would run pipe through the theater and they would have lights that were lit by gas, natural gas. Worked pretty good. In fact, now for the first time they were able to lower the lights and bring them up. They could control how much gas they were getting. So you could actually dim the lights in the theater as opposed to it just being on. And that was considered that was considered major. Major. You could turn the lights on and dim them. They started to have what they referred to as footlights on the stage. Again, they'd run a gas line down. They'd have little lights along the floor and the lights shot up into the people's faces. But it helped to, to get more light on the face as opposed to just coming down from the top. That was, that was a great innovation. No one had done that before. That was lovely. But then the real change comes with, you said it, electrical, electrical lights. Once they got electrical lights, now they could really, really change theater because they could control it and it was a lot safer. One of the reasons there were so many fires in theaters was because of gas lighting. Uh, in the 1800s, a lot of theaters caught on fire and burnt down. That's why even today in movie theaters, there's a law in almost every state saying you can't yell what in the theater? Fire. fire. Because in the 1800s, these theaters would catch on fire and people would panic. Instead of orderly going out, they would all run to the door and everybody would get crushed. That's why everybody, so many people got killed trying to get out. Um, but electric lighting changed that. It was now safer. They could control it. They could control how bright it was. They could take it out all the way. And it was totally, totally new innovation. The first person, hitting the next one, the first person to see the aesthetic possibilities of light was this guy right here, Adolf Appia. Adolf Appia. The first person to see the aesthetic, A-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C, aesthetic possibilities of light. The first person to see the aesthetic possibilities of light. He lived from 1862 to 1928. Once they got electric light, he started to see all kinds of possibilities on how you could affect designs. He began to add, they had experimented with this before, but Adolf Appia really followed through with it. They started to add color to the lights. And they would put electric, or electric, they, they had electric lights, they would put glass, colored glass in front of the lights, and it would make the stage different colors. So now you could put, say, blue lights on the stage to represent night, and uh, more um, um, yellow or white light 
to suggest daytime. And so none of that had been ever thought about until he did it. He was the first. And it, it just changed theater. Next slide, please. Okay. The primary functions of light. The first one is the most important. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Visibility. Why do we need light? What are the primary functions? Visibility. To see the action. To see what's going on on stage. Another function of light is to reveal shapes and forms. To reveal shapes and forms. Especially once we got electric light, we now could hang lights with instruments in different places. And this, this, this allows us, uh, I'm going to explain what I'm talking about in terms of shapes and forms. If I light, if I set a light on me only from the front, what would happen to my body? No, I wouldn't be in a silhouette because the light's coming from the front. But it would do what? It would make a real big shadow. Behind me would be a huge shadow. And I would look very flat, one-dimensional. If light, if a car light, if you shine a car light on something, and it's just shining directly to it, unless it's, you know, it's the deer in the headlights kind of thing. But if you shine a car light directly on somebody, it's light coming only from one direction. It flattens them out. You don't really get to see the, the, the dimensions. So what we do in theater is we usually have two lights. We divide the stage up into areas. And each area gets two lights from the front. And they come in at 45 degree angles onto the face. So we're lighting this side of the face and this side of the face from the front. This starts to give my face shape on stage. Okay, so we have two coming from the front, then we have two coming from the side, side light. And the side light comes in from the side, now this is getting lit, again, giving me more shape. To eliminate, you, you, you were right on, to eliminate shadows, we were talking about the, the shadows, we have one backlight. And it comes down the back, and this lights the back of me and takes the shadow off the back of my face, the back of my head. And so now, no matter how I turn, I'm fully lit. And there is shape. Just from the front would be flat. Just from the top, if we were only going back to chandeliers, there's all these shadows on the face. The way they compensated for that in the 1800s was they would use extra makeup. They would use a lot of makeup to help bring the face out. Nowadays, we don't have to use much makeup. In fact, over at Barter Theater, it's rare that they use makeup on anybody, unless it's special effects. Because the lighting is so now that we just want a natural look. Um, I got any dancers in here? I think before I had some people who said they danced. In dancing, you want to see the body. I mean, dancing is all about seeing the bodies. And so in dance, they'll use extra side lighting coming in to just make sure the body is lit all the way up. And it's all, I mean, they'll have side lights going, running the whole length of the, of the stage for dance. Um, if I don't want to see something, and I want to put it in silhouette, where do I light from? The back. From the back. You guys heard of the play, The Full Monty? Yep. You have. There was a movie, too, called The Full Monty. You guys, how many of you know of it? You do. Anyone else? Oh, man, it's funny. The Full Monty 
first came out as a film from England. It was, it was done in England first. And it, it was a movie. And then they went and they wrote a, a, a Broadway play um, based on the movie. And it's about a group of out of work steel workers. And they're all buddies, all but one. one one's not too, much, not too friendly to the rest of them. But they're out of work. The, the steel mill that they work at is closed down. In the original production, again, it took place in England. Uh, in the new production, it takes place in Pennsylvania. And they're out of work steel workers. They don't know what to do. They're collecting unemployment. Their lives just have gone terrible. Uh, the wives of, of the different workers just, you know, uh, are unhappy. They don't know how they're going to make a living. The town is just decaying. And their wives come to them one day, one day and say, Honey, we've got tickets to go see a show they're going to have down at the bar. And the guy goes, What? For what? Well, it's the Chippendale Dancers. Okay, how many of you know who the Chippendale Dancers are? Don't be shy. Okay, male strippers, for those of you who don't know. And they're really buff. These are really buff dancers. You don't get to be a Chippendale unless you got what it takes. And the Chip and, they go to the Chippendales dance, and the husbands get a little jealous about this. And they go down to the bar to look in to kind of see what these Chippendales look like. And they, they sneak in, there's this sign, no men allowed. And they sneak in through a bathroom window, and they, and they watch. And they look, and these women are like frothing at the mouth. I mean, wow, screaming over these guys. And money's getting stuffed. In their little G strings, big time, and they're looking at this cash and looking at these Chippendale dancers, and they're going, That's an idea. We can do that. And these guys are built like me. <laughs> well, one of them is real like tall and skinny. But they go, Let's do it. We'll form a dance troupe. And we're going to dance, and all the women are going to go crazy, and we're going to make lots of money. Problem is, they don't know how to dance, and they're built like me. They're still workers. They're these rough, tough guys. And so they, they get one of the guys who's, who had been their boss, who's also now out of work, and he's had a dance class. He and his wife took ballroom dancing. So he starts to try to teach the other ones how to dance. And they're pitiful. And most of the stories they're trying to learn how to dance, they're pitiful. And they're dancing in secret because they don't want word to get out. And they don't want any of their buddies to know that they're dancing. And finally, one day, word gets out. And this woman comes up and looks at him and starts laughing. Says, you're going <laughs> to, you, <laughs> with that body? <laughs> You're gonna, <laughs> and they get mad and they go, Yeah, but we're going full Monty, which is British for no G string. It's all gonna go. The bar gets booked up. Every woman in town wants to go see who these guys are. And they're going to go to laugh to watch these guys take all their clothes off. So they sell the place out. Now they've got to do it. They've got to go through with it. Well, this is a long story to get to light. They do this dance. And it's in the show. It's in the Broadway show. It's in the movie. And they do the dance. And... and uh, the song is a, done to a Tom Jones song, Keep Your Hat On. And they've got, they've got little policemen's hats, like the Chippendales guys. And they're doing their dance, 
and they finally reach through and they pull off their underwear, but they got their little policeman hat and they cover it. And then they turn and they cover it. And they do a whole little tease routine. And finally, at the end, it gets to the last big end of the number, and all of them throw their hats. And that's how the movie ends. And that's how the play ends. Well, if a theater did the full Monty, the police would be there to shut them down. I mean, they, they go full Monty. But at the moment they pull the hat, every light in the theater goes off except a big light behind them. So the audience sees silhouette. And unless you're, there's not a whole lot to see. <laughs> With these actors, there's not a whole lot to see. And then it goes to blackout and they leave. Now, they did a show over at Barter Theater. I got tickled. I had friends that were in it. And I, I laughed one day because I was talking to one of the technicians, one of the women that was one of the technicians. Said, Unfortunately, she goes, unfortunately, we're the only ones who saw Full Monty. Because they were standing on the side waiting for it to come off with robes. <laughs> and when they went, they, they saw him. And they said, we're, we're like this, <laughs> with our robes for them to catch him when they came off stage. Because they come back out in the curtain call with their robe on. They have bathrobes on. Okay. Reveal <laughs> or not reveal shapes and forms. Provide focus. Provide focus is done by lights changing where we see. We, we, a light might be on me here and then all of a sudden on you. And the audience will follow the light. They will look to where the light is. So we can do that with electric lights. We just change the intensity on different parts of the stage at different parts of the play. Create mood. That's a pretty important one. Creating mood. I'll, I'll ask you again. In real life, businesses are concerned about mood in their business, especially restaurants, food service places. What's the lighting like in a McDonald's? Huh? It's industrial. It's what? Weird? <laughs> Severe. It's real bright. And it's, it's, it's what, what kind of lights are they usually? Fluorescents. Real bright, extremely bright, almost to the point of blinding you. And, and, and they're fluorescents. Also, they do something with their set design. Is it comfortable to sit in furniture in a McDonald's for very long? No, it's like sitting on... They're real hard, and they're designed to be uncomfortable. Why? So you don't stay. They want you to come in, eat, and get out, because they make money, because the food's cheap, on how many people they can serve a day. They want the billions and billions. They want you in and out, so they can get more people in there, and keep the place full of people all day long. But nobody stays very long. Most people use the drive through these days. Yeah, a lot of people use the drive through but still, they don't want you to stay. In a fast food restaurant, the lighting is going to be very bright, and the seating is going to be very uncomfortable. Okay, you go to a nice, say, Italian or French restaurant, a really nice one, an expensive one. What's the lighting going to be like? Dim. You're barely going to be able to see your food. They're going to dim it down. They're also going to use some color in their lighting. What colors will they go for? Reds and blues. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to dim it down. It's going to be really dim. And is the furniture comfortable? Oh, yeah. They want you to stay there for hours. 
they're going to keep bringing that dessert tray out. They're going to keep bringing out more wine. They're going to keep bringing it. Don't you want something else? Because they make their money because their food is expensive, not on how many people come in there, but how long they can keep you there eating. So they want it to be comfortable. Also, you're more likely to want to get romantic, a romantic dinner in a nice French or Italian restaurant than in McDonald's. Oh, I know some of you are going, no, I want someone to pick me up and take me to Burger King. I mean, that's, wow, that's romantic. You want some more fries, babe? God, I'm so glad we went out together. You finally went out with me. We can get a Big Mac. I'll supersize it for you. <laughs> no, it's not romantic. <laughs> Create mood. Light changes mood. Finally, uh, last two. Establish time and place. Lighting... What color is the sky in the early morning on a nice day? Or kind of orangey, kind of red, uh, with a lot of yellow in it. What about nighttime, or right before sundown? Huh. It's more purplish. By changing the color of the lights, I can say to an audience what time of day the play is taking place. And I also can show place, again, are we indoors, is it outdoors, because the lights are different. Okay. Finally, reinforce main idea of the play. All, all design elements come back to this. What is the director's concept, and do the lights help say that, help make that director's concept true, whatever that might be. Any questions about the primary functions of light? Next one. The properties of light. The first property of light is intensity. How bright or dim is the stage going to be? Intensity. And we control intensity with dimmers. We have a lighting board. It's usually in the booth of the, of the theater. And you can bring the lights up or you can take them down. Intensity. How bright is it going to be? It's controlled by dimmers. Color. Color is controlled, and remember this, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Color is controlled by gels. We call them gels. G-E-L-S. Gels. Gels are sheets of pl plastic, a form of plastic, and they're different colors, and they go through the entire color scale. You can go through all the colors, and they'll have these sheets that you can buy, and what you do is on the front of a light, a theater light, on the front of it there's usually a frame. And you buy little frames that go in these frames. And in the frame you cut to fit gels. Stick those gels in the frame, put it on the light, and now you can ch totally change the color of the light for the show. The gels that they make now, uh, they've gotten really good at that. They take a lot of heat because lights get hot. Well, they can use glass. There are glass, uh, you know, you can buy colored glass, but it costs a lot more. These gels, I can buy these huge sheets for, you know, next to nothing. But you might only have to pay for one piece of glass. Yeah. <laughs> But I, but I can use it again and again and again as long as it doesn't burn out. Um, next property of light, direction. Where is the light coming from? I just talked about that. 
Is it coming from the sides? Is it coming from the front? Is it backlighting? Direction. Form. Form is referring to the kind of light that I'm going to show or put on someone. Is it one single beam? You've seen, everybody here has seen big follow spots, right? You have a big follow spot, big light you follow somebody with. They're huge. They're, they're getting smaller now, but they're still, they're pretty big. You have to have an operator turn them and move them. Well, that's one big beam of light I can put on one person. Also on stage, sometimes you will have an actor standing on stage and just one thing of light comes down on them. Most of the time, though, we have a lot of different lights and we mix them. And it makes it more natural, less theatric. But form, is it a single beam or do we mix them? And finally, the last property of light is movement. We call it a crossfade. Lights on me. And all of a sudden, the light goes off of me and comes up on you. And what they'll do with the dimmer board is they'll just change it. They'll crossfade the light. Uh, do -do 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 -do. There's the light, now I'm going to crossfade it. And it's on the actor, it's on the students, oh no, no, on the, there, faculty, oh, and we crossfade it, ah, oh, there it is. Okay, bring up the light, there it is, oh, beautiful, now everybody, oh, good, end of show. Good. <laughs> that work? McDonald's. <laughs> Get you out of your seats. Okay. Go to the next one. They're basically, we have a number of different kinds of lights they use in theater. The two most popular, I want you to know. This is called an ellipsoidal light. An ellipsoidal light. The nickname for it is LECO, L-E-K-O, LECO. It's easier to say to someone, go get a LECO, I need to hang it, as opposed to, go run and get a ellipsoidal, and we're going to hang it over here. So they just, we're lazy, we say LECO, usually. The ellipsoidal light is used for long throws, for distance. It has a very sharp beam. So it, it shoots a long way, and we can control the light. One reason people like to use them, these little things here, these are called sliders. You can push those sliders in and move them around, and you can change the shape of the light. So if I want to, to um, say I want to light you, but I don't want to get them in on the shot, We'll bring in the slider, and instead of it being a big round thing of light, we'll bring it in and cut it off right there. And it's so you can focus the lights and aim them at what you want the audience to see. And sometimes that's real important, especially if light is shooting off stage. You bring it in, bring in the slider, so the light only hits the stage. Uh, let's go to the next one. Ellipsoidal. And this is just a drawing showing you the different places, the different parts of it. Um, it. Usually has a clamp on the top so that you can hook it to a pipe. And here's the little frame here that I was telling you about that you put your gel on. Okay. Ellipsoidal or Lico. Let's go to the next one. The other light that we like to use, and you'll see a lot, is called a, 
The S is silent like the P in swimming. What? <laughs> Come on, get it. Uh -oh. Yeah, thank you. Fresnel. Fresnel, not Fresnel. Fresnel. F R E S N E L. Fresnel. It gets its name from the lens. See the circles? This helps, the glass is cut in a way with a whole bunch of circles in it and it diffuses the light and causes the light to go like this. So it covers a wide area. Therefore it's used close up. I hang it close because if I, if I were to aim a Fresnel back to you guys in the back, we had a Fresnel up here, it would shoot out this way, and by the time it got back there, it wouldn't be very bright at all. But you guys would be really bright. So it's used for, for close, close um, distances. The Fresnel has a frame in the front, again, to hang a gel in, to put a gel in. Uh, it has a clamp on the back, and it's, it's just like a little box. It's, there's not a whole lot in it. You, you open it up in the back, back here in the back, this opens up, that's where you hang your lamp, your, your light, lighting source. From now, S is silent like the P in swimming. Didn't get a laugh the second time either, okay. Let's go to the next one. That's a close-up of a Fresnel lens. See how it's a bunch of circles? And like I said, it diffuses the light. It shoots it out. Next one? Okay, something else I want you to know. A gobo. G-O-B-O. -O. Gobos are made out of glass or they're made out of tin. Not tin foil, but a little thicker than tin foil. And what you do with a gobo, the glass ones are pre-made. We make our own a lot. And what we do is you cut shapes in them. This is a tree shape. You put it in the light and when it shines down on the floor, it makes, it makes the floor see a shadow of whatever the shape is. So if we're doing, a, a, say, we're doing Midsummer Night's Dream and we're out in the woods, we can put a lot of gobos in the lights and the shadows coming down will look like leaves and branches, like light coming through leaves or branches. And that's what this one is. Huh? Like a template. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can do different kinds. Um, I did a production of uh, the play Our Town once. Our Town really doesn't use a set. But there's one scene, it's a wedding scene, takes place in the church. And what we did is we did a gobo of a stained glass window. And when the preacher came out, all of a sudden the, the, the light came over his head and the audience knew we were in a church. We didn't have to have anything else. Uh, so you can, you can get all kinds of shapes. A lot of people, like I said, make them. They'll cut them into whatever shape they want or whatever thing they want. But you can buy them in a lot of shapes too. Let's go to the next one. Here's, a, here's how it's showing the gobo being hooked to the light. And then it would just shine through. As it shines through, it just makes that shape. Is there one more? I can't remember. Okay, uh, let me get to this next. Okay. Any questions about gobos?